Generic greetings and welcome back once again to Airships Conquer the Skies. Today's beverage is a lovely glass of pink grapefruit. So in the previous video of Airships, we made a vessel that I wouldn't exactly call useless nor a waste of resources, but certainly was not as effective as we would have liked. The original intention was to make something that would be able to quickly move towards a static structure and take it out via the gratuitous application of flame spouted forth uh, from the multitude of heavy flamethrowers that we mounted on it. And although it worked up to a point, it had two major issues. The first one is that it would often get immobilised, which meant that the very effective, albeit short-range, flamethrowers would not then be able to go forth and engage subsequent targets behind the original. And that basically meant that it was useless. Uh, the second issue is that it had the same problem as the Death Star. And I'm not talking about massive health and safety violations or PR problems. I'm talking about the fact that it would explode if you shot it in the right or wrong place, depending on what side you're on. So those two issues made it um, only effective in certain scenarios. And we can pretty much put that to bed. I will look at the design at some point. But in this video, we want to take the same original idea. And that's make a ground vessel mainly because it's cheaper. And do something that will be able to take out the static structures at a decent sort of um, cost because we could always overpoint it but that's not the issue is it the issue is that we want to be able to have a roughly a roughly even fight but still be able to win the fight so if we go over to design and fight and over to the building editor we can see that if we open a design and open the white lookout we can see that we have this well this is basically this the thing that we always verse because it's one of the most common it's got cannons on it it's got the rifles and it's got the flak cannons those are the three things we are concerned with now we can already discount the flak cannons because we're making a ground vessel we don't care about those we then have cannons and also the rifles now the main thing that we're looking at is is the maximum accurate range 960 meters for the cannons and the rifle surprisingly more effective at 1100 meters so we need to make something that could either take these shots and be essentially resistant to the mount of fire unlikely or we try to outrange it. Now, there's multiple, way multiple ways we could do that. Let's go over to the uh, landship editor and we'll check out our weapons. There's multiple things we could use. You've got an acid spitter there, which has, sadly, it's a maximum range of 85 metres, so actually not brilliant, although these are pretty good at chewing through armour. You can see it says, uh, powerful acid extracted from the glands of horrifying creatures capable of eating through even the strongest armour in time. We've tried these in, actually, a fairly recent episode and it didn't go too well. Um, and we've also got things like the front turret, We've got um, things like, where is it, uh, grape shot cannon, all short range and harpoon gun, fairly useless. We now come on to things like the heavy cannon. Heavy cannon, maximum accurate range, 1,100 meters, so pretty good. It has a piercing damage of 120, just to combine that, or sorry, compare that, should I say, with a standard cannon. Let's go over to that. We can see that the damage for a standard cannon is 50, whereas the big one is 120. So actually, I would say you're best off mounting three of those uh, because it is not only cheaper because this thing explodes easily and these um, may explode you can see that uh, hang on what is the cost of this thing the cost of a cannon is 69 whereas the heavy cannon is 316 so i would say pretty much go with the standard cannons however we've also got other things like the imperial cannon which is a, a mod but it's also far too expensive for what we're looking at we've got suspendium cannon which is something we could go with but that's very expensive actually you know, it's not too expensive it's uh, 320 but it's also quite large it's not it's only slightly fumble doesn't explode and you can see maximum accurate range is 3300 meters with a 90 piercing damage a very precise instrument so the chances are you could sit back and just uh, shoot at long range and take out whatever you are aiming at the problem is that it takes a while to reload. Actually, three seconds isn't bad. The fire arc is fairly pathetic, but it doesn't matter because it's going to be sitting in back. And the main issue, I guess, is that it will... Uh, I guess you, you're not fire, you're not doing a lot of damage and you're certainly not doing any blast damage, which means it's going to take a long time to take out what you're shooting at. So you better be able to wither that fire. The other option, and normally my preferred option, are to use aerial torpedoes because they are relatively... They're relatively inexpensive when you compare them to some of the other stuff we looked at, only 208, and they are pretty good at taking out 
uh, the static structures because they have a blast damage of 160, splash distance of 7 meters, reload time is 12 seconds sadly but takes 2 ammo per shot as well and the maximum accurate range is 1600 meters so it's pretty much exactly where we want it to be. So what we need to do is build something that can hold a multitude of these, so something like that perhaps and then we'll make it quite heavily armoured and we'll sit back and just fire away. We want to make it quite short and tall because we want to have it so that essentially we can fit multiples of these in and I'm looking at getting this around about um, I'm looking at around about the 1300 cost if I can but let's just see how we get on with it now we're going to go over to propulsion and check, see what we've got there. We've got things like large tracks, far too big, large no, uh, large legs, large tracks, medium legs. Uh, medium legs wouldn't be too bad, although I'm looking for something very cheap. Small legs, would that be effective? Well, it can go on there. If we go to armor and then to say steel armor and then fill that, that would technically work like that at the moment. Or it would be, sorry, it wouldn't work, but it would be able to um, stay upright. And I'm guessing, mm, I'm guessing once we put the the stuff on it's probably not going to work so what if we put some tracks on it if we put some tracks on it get rid of that and put some standard tracks that would give us a lot better a lot better weight uh, capacity but sadly not great for the cost because we're already getting um, quite high there but what I'll do is I'll place this down and then I'll, I'll place the weapons in a moment let me just get rid of those for now so we're going to go with the tracks because why not and hopefully we can keep it around about this width remember this thing doesn't have to travel very far we're just mainly looking at the weight capacity other options would be spider legs too expensive medium legs would be how big would that be they're not too bad but they're also actually medium legs might be the option because they carry 1350 and they're a little bit cheaper but only by only by a tiny bit it doesn't really matter that we use those uh the, yeah the, the cost's probably okay all right we're not going to use the small legs i mean could we use two small legs that is the question actually could we use two small legs would that be as effective because no because that would be more expensive than two sets of medium legs so we might as well go with the medium legs and there we go right so let's get some stuff on here so it can actually move and walk and all that sort of thing so we're going to go to our resources here and we're going to put a small coal store we don't need anything else other than that that is pretty much um, fine we're going to move this further forward like so and one two three four i'd like four weapons weapons on it but let's just see if that even works we need to have a fire extinguisher there we don't need a fire extinguisher but i would say that it is an advantage we're going to place that in there that is our large ammo store or standard ammo size i guess we need a reinforced supply hatch and then we also need well i would like to put on if we go to command and crew i would like to put on a telescope and a crow's nest but the telescope itself which gives us was a 30 percent range uh, accuracy Sorry, 30% more um, accuracy at range. That is also quite expensive. And we're already at 1,308. When you consider when you want to put a crow's nest on as well, plus the fact that we don't have any crew at the moment, it's probably not going to be able to fit on. Let's place that in there. Actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to move these back a little bit because I want to have it um, staggered like so, just to make it look a bit better. Um, something like that would be fine. We also want to put that in there and move that further forward because then we can if we want to put well actually where would a better place for a better place for this be? We can place that up there, we can place that in there, and then place that in there because then it means we don't have to put um, another ladder in. And the connections is uh, the connections are okay there, but not around there. So we'll place that a little bit further back. We will have a probably just a cockpit is acceptable, I think. That would probably do the job. Um, would that? Would we be able to put that there? No, we wouldn't. We wouldn't be able to put that there. And connecting all these up is just not going to function. So, I guess it would be a okay. case so of put that there, that there, and that is technically in. So why don't we just move it further forward? Like so. Actually, we could do it the other way and have it sort of staggered forward like that. So it's got a very sort of forward aggressive look. That wouldn't be too bad, I don't think get rid of that move that further forward we've still got the issue with the connections though and even if we line it up it's not going to do much um let's just see if we can put that down we'll put that there move that down to there that can go in here maybe that one in there that to there that does that have the connections though it does not we're still gonna we're still gonna lose out on these these connections okay i guess middle i'm, I'm on the middle is generally 
the right choice. That technically would work. It does say the ship is heavy and have difficulty navigating terrain. That is correct, but we don't really care. In terms of overlays, we have good connections between all of these. In terms of crew, recommended is 19. We've only got 12. Let me, remo let me remove that top bit there, and we'll put a berth in. That'll take us up to 15, which is not too bad. Armour is what we were looking for. Okay, all right. The cockpit is not in an ideal position. Not in an ideal position. Don't know where else we could put it, though. Because if you put it further up, it's not got a connection to the top. We could perhaps remove those, move that further forward. And we'll have to place this in... Well, place it somewhere else. Like that. That technically gets us up to closer towards our crew complement, which is what we're looking for. Mm, okay. Alright, I don't particularly mind that. Let me put some shapes on it just to edge it off a little bit. Let's go to shapes and decoration and perhaps a nice little curve piece like that. That might that might look quite nice. And you know what? It does have something for, going for it, actually. Mm, it's not too bad. I'm not totally against that. But I wonder what else we can have. We've got uh, Downwards Dome. Wouldn't mind a couple of... Oh, we can't put the domes on there because it would block their line of sight. So a total of 40% extra accuracy with these should be good. But the question is, would this thing on its own be able to take out? I oh, don't mind like that. I don't mind like that. Although, no, I think that curve one just seemed to fit a little bit better. No, I think we had it right the first time. Don't know, there's something quite like about that. Okay, so we've got that in. Uh, that is pretty much sorted. We're not going to paint it any particular colour. In terms of decoration, we could have uh, a nameplate, so we'll go for a steel nameplate. It's called, currently called the Banshee. I don't particularly mind that, but not really, not really in keeping with what we usually go with. We could put a little coat of arms on it there. Medium size. Do we put flames on the front? No, that's just, that's just over the top, isn't it? Um, okay, so I think we will, I think we'll give that one a go. Let's name it, and what shall we name it? Um, we'll call it the leads, why not? Uh, and we'll save design, and done. So, we will leave that, we'll go over to combat, and to the, oh, that's a, not a very, very flat piece of uh, terrain here. We're going to go to add building, over to the white lookout, place that normally where we will place it. So this is where we start having, hopefully, the advantage, because we are further away. Or normally, they would be further back. That's generally where um, I, myself, and also the AI places the, the structures, just because uh, things have further to come towards them. But we're going to take advantage of that, and we're instead going to go the other side with the leads. So we're going to get that and place it in here. I've not already used the leads before. Let's see if there's leads. Uh, well, it's not in there. Okay, so we will start the fight. Immediately, we're going to put this on aimed fire. That is our that is our goal there, to make sure it's aimed up and get some good hits. And it looks like it is not firing. Nope, there we go. It is uh, firing away there. And you can see that it's used a total of, well, it's two ammo each. So we are taking some shots. We've got outside view. You can see that we are getting hit. We can actually press move and go back over just because, well, why not? Our projectiles are moving forward. And we should point out that we are more expensive than this. And I'm guessing that the flight time of these projectiles is actually longer than the reload time. So we're probably going to have to, yeah, yeah I, can, I can hear it firing. We're going to have two salvos in the air. And already, we've got four very good hits. We've got a secondary explosion on the back there, and that has taken out the remaining cannons, plus the plus the flat gun on the top there, which is excellent. We can see the hole right in the centre where we've um, taken out a lot of crew, and actually there's someone carrying someone along there. Oh, good grief. Let me just go over to zoom to fit, and then far over to the left, and we can see that we have taken some damage, but because of the distance, we're only getting scraped... Um, 
uh, well, most of the shots are missing by the look of it. But anyway, let's uh, go further forward there. We can see that these shots are heading that way. And oh, there we go. So we've got, hang on, one shot's just, one set of shots is just hitting. One is uh, in flight and there's some getting reloaded there. What is a concern, uh, firstly, we are taking damage to the weapons, which is not good. The bridge, sorry, that's not the bridge, that's the... That's the uh, the birth. That's okay. Uh, and ammo, fifty nine ammo. So we're almost on half ammo before we before we really have got any. Oh, I was gonna say no, <laughs> I was gonna say got any great results, but that sort of speaks for itself. Okay, right, fine. So. It looks like we've looked out and hit the right point. Sadly, they have still got weapons. They've now got less weapons. They've now got no weapons, apart from the odd... Oh, they've got one rifle. So I think we can safely say that unless we get hit in the exact wrong spot, we've got this fight pretty much in the bag. I'm going to then move this thing further forward because why not? We've got nothing stopped. There's, there's no reason to now um, stay back there. You can see the shots are coming in. I'm guessing because of the flight time, these could have been targeted up here before that was before that was destroyed. It is a possibility. Uh, we're getting closer just so we can get the shots, well, obviously more accurate. And it also means that... How, how far away is it? It's quite a ways away, and we're actually <laughs> we're almost the same speed as the as the torpedoes. And it looks like we're going to hit the right spot here. Bang, and there we are. That is now taken out, and we have won with minimal damage by the look of it. Excellent. So, that was a lot more effective than I thought. Naturally, we were overpointed, so we have to take that into account, and it's a very small sample set of one. So, let's go over to combat once again and put it back into the day. We're going to say open the land ship. Sorry, no, open the buildings, and this time we're going to put the land fortress in. Now, this is a completely different beast. This thing is not built for accuracy. It's got a lot of flak on the top, which obviously we don't care about. It's got cannons. Not what, not a lot. Two, four, six cannons, which is I think about the same as the other one anyway. This massive uh, turrety type thing there, and the main armament, a huge row of sponsons right in the centre. Two, four, six, eight. Two, four, six, eight. Sixteen sponsons in total, which means that, yeah, that's going to be a bit difficult for us to deal with. Let's just see. Can I see the range of it? Maximum accurate range, eight hundred and forty meters. So we're going to go. <laughs> Yeah, as far back as we can. The problem is if we need to move forward, well, the terrain is not exactly conducive to uh, sprinting. And there's some weird, that's some weird warping there. I don't know, it seems to be like... I don't know, the zoom seems to be a bit weird on these angles. Is it just me? Ooh, seems a bit weird. Anyway, we're going to go over to Landship and to the leads, and we're going to place one, two, three, four of them in play. That would bring us up to, oh, a little bit more than what we ought to. Well, obviously, because these are uh, quite expensive. That would be 4,000 and remove one. So we are on... 2,938 against 3,246. So they have the numerical points advantage. However, we hopefully will be able to deal with them quite effectively. We're going to go back again to aimed fire. That is our main goal. There is a huge hail of shots coming out from the sponsons. So they are able to fire at us. Although, I don't know if you saw, but a lot of those miss. So they're all saying aim carefully. There's a lot of them coming in. Most of them are missing, um, but the ones that are hitting are causing damage to, well, yeah, you can see how fast they fire. Um, so that's bad. So we need to hopefully take out a couple of these. Oh, that didn't sound good. That sounded like actual proper we should worry about that damage. It has taken out... Oh, the crow's nest has been taken out. Oh, poor Gwendolyn. She was on top there just monitoring the situation until she got a cannonball to the ear. Right, let's just unpause it and we'll see if the original uh, shot that we fired out, the original volley, is going to do some damage. So it looks like it's going to hit right on the top there and no, it missed completely and only took out a little bit. Oh, we've got a fire at the front section. We've got some secondary explosions in and around the flak areas. That's going to be another secondary explosion which is going to take out even more. So they've lost their very large cannon or turret at the top there. They've lost some ammo there and also so some cannons. They've now been halved in their cannon uh, arm there. That's another one being taken off, followed by some flame, followed by a secondary explosion, followed by more shots that are hitting it, and we're going to split it in half, which means that um, 
well. It means that delivering posts can be an issue. They've received some damage to the back cannons. The sponsons are still firing, but they have lost one, two, three, four, five plus change. Yep, that is the case. Let me just pause it a moment and go over to the left because we want to see what damage and what sort of state we are in. And we have lost some armor. We've lost one of these torpedo launches, which, well, I guess it means we're not going to use as much ammo. So, you know, every cloud and all that. All right, we're going to rush over to the right-hand side as fast as we can. Um, it says follow action there, but I've never really used it. Um, no, we're just going to stand. Just go go to, ma go to um, manual control. And it looks like we have just chopped it right in half, which is excellent. We've got some more secondary explosions there. They now have only three sponsons. Correction, two sponsons on the front, as well as... I think only a couple on the back there, but I can't really see because of the flame. So, looks like, nope, that's the front section being completely obliterated. There is nothing left of it. They really have only three sponsons left, plus the cannons at the back, plus the two flat cannons on the top. Looks like we've actually made an explosion to take out the fire, which is <laughs> interesting. And we are now taking out the rest of what they have here. So that's now gone. So really, the only thing that we are fighting is that little 2x2 two two at the back there, which has some cannons uh, pointing aft. So we're going to move our vessels forward because, well, we might as well get the advantage of range, uh, close range, obviously. Uh, we'll say move to there. Actually, only one of them's... It says two units, but it didn't show two units there. Is one of them a mobile? No, it is not. It probably just wasn't ready for orders. Um, you can see because of the weight, it is um, quite low down. That we well, quite low down. So when it goes down there, it sort of um, has this weird sort of U, uh, like uh, dunking type motion. But it did manage to get there, and it's quite sprightly as well. Huzzah for the Empire! We've managed to take out pretty much everything that existed. So they've got one little crow's nest spike there. We got a couple of these extra tanks that were. I think that was from where the water tanks were to put the fire out. Obviously, they weren't as effective as they would have liked. And we have two, looks like to be some entrance ways there. So that is a Vic and Terry. So that is good. Let me go once again to combat. I'm going to try this out just in... We'll try it in a rainy season. And this time, we're going to do a little bit of a combination of things. We're going to add a building. We're going to have the land fortress in play, probably further forward. And then we'll say add a building and a white lookout. So we're going to have two white lookouts, one and two. And then we're going to move this thing a little bit further back because obviously the sponsors want to be close range. So that is uh, that is a realistic setup. If we saw that, we wouldn't, we wouldn't really bat an eye. We'd say, yeah, that's pretty much what we expected. So... Um, do we also want to put in some smaller ones? That's a thing, actually. We'll try this fight, and then we'll try the smaller ones. So, their total value is, let's call it 6,000. So, we can get four for that, I believe. So, we'll go to a land ship. The leads. Uh, one, two, three, and then four, which takes us up to... 5,876 versus 5,950. So we're still underpointed, so that is fine. We're going to go over to an aimed fire. They will take their time. And actually, you can see some of them have just um, fired shots out in the first place, so that's not great. Now, I'm not I'm not targeting anything here. I'm just letting them do their own thing. They're just doing their own thing, and wow, that's a problem. Why is that not on aimed fire? Uh, that is on aimed fire. That's on aimed fire. That's on aimed fire. And that's on aimed fire. They're all on aimed fire. So I don't know why there was a delay in the orders there. So I'm going to let them target whatever they think is appropriate. And we've already seen, ooh, a bit of an explosion on this one. So we've lost a lot of the arm. In fact, we've lost most of this. And there's going to be another explosion that has really, well, massively impacted our capability. Because we've lost pretty much one ship. We lost a quarter of our forces in the initial opening volley. Um, speaking of an initial opening volley, they have also taken heavy damage to the land fortress. They have lost all of the cannons on the front. Sponsons have been taken out quite a bit, and what else is happening? It looks like this cannon is still in play, but they won't have access to it. Um, as I said, I haven't targeted this on any particular point, although I think it is about time I then target the back bit there. This has a total of four sponsons. I can hear some hitting of armor, and I reckon we're going to see, yep, we're going to see another explosion here. So that is our forces halved. Hmm, okay. So basically the hail of fire, I mean, we couldn't weather it. It just wasn't going to happen. And we can see that a lot of these shots that are coming in will be exploding. 
There we go. Um, in the right place, actually. That's good. Now, I'm going to target this one at the back here because, quite frankly, this one's already got secondary explosions that are going to finish it. And also, it, you know, there's no point in firing and expending ordnance uh, against two turrets. There's no point. And I think we've just lost another one. It sounds like we have. Yep, there's another one going up. We have lost the all of the armament on this one now. So we're basically down to one vessel, which means basically we're probably going to lose the fight. It's very unlikely. But unless we hit something extremely critical, that we'll be able to win this fight. Because we've got two land fortress. Fortri? Fortrises. Fortress. Uh, things to verse. That's not going to go too well. So we're still on aim fire. I still, I still think that is the way to go, although looking at the inaccuracy of that, it doesn't seem to be helping out, although it would have even less accuracy. We're still making sure that we're targeting that. Oh, don't take that out. Brilliant. So we're, we're just chipping the top off. None of these shots have really landed where we want, them, we want them to. That one's not too bad. We are taking guns out, but we're not taking the ones that are pointing at us. And I can hear more explosions, so I think that is a game over. And yep, that is a game over. We have lost everything. On, oh, in terms of all the armament anyway, so that has not gone entirely to plan. So, it looks like we managed to completely decimate the land fortress, but these, not so much. Let's leave that fight, we have lost that, and then we'll go back into it. We'll once again try the same thing, so it is a white lookout, which we'll place there and there. But we'll then place the land fortress right in there, and then, <laughs> look at that. <laughs> just sunk right down um let's see if i can put it in a better place like um i don't know it's just going to keep altering the terrain now isn't it yeah that's just it <laughs> okay i'm i'm hoping i don't have to go very far forward because it's just going to be a bit of a drop there hmm nice big moat so once again we'll go for our land ship leads one two three and four fairly staggered start the fight and i'm gonna say rapid fire simply because we need to get shots out and we need to get this thing destroyed quickly and we also haven't tried it so you don't know until you know now i'm i'm still under the impression that i think aimed fire is the best way forward but we'll let it fire a couple of volleys and then we'll see how we get on because there's no point in having an aimed fire and holding our shots back if we are not going to be able to fire them because we're all dead and as you can see the dispersal is huge but it has taken out a sizable chunk of this which is good i think we've already lost one thing um i'm pretty sure i heard uh, some explosions to the left of me so that basically means that yeah we have we have taken a lot of damage it looks like we are managing to take out a lot of the armament on the land fortress but we're also wasting a lot of the shots they are going pretty much all over the place but luckily because of their because of their layout they are hitting back here. Actually, I'm going to target that because if you target that, the if the, say, the spreads I don't know, 50 metres, we're more likely to hit there and there. I'm just going to pause a moment and go back. No point in pausing. We'll go back and see what we've lost. Uh, we have lost uh, half of our forces and there's going to be a second one here. And No, we just managed to put it out. We managed to put it out but we have lost. Oh, hang on. That's going to be an explosion. There we go. So we've lost all but one and that's probably not long for this world either. In terms of ammo, whoa, we are very low on ammo. So we're going to go for an imp fire and we'll see what we've managed to do. So the land fortress is pretty much destroyed. We have some explosions here on this front white lookout version 1 and I think it's pretty much going to be destroyed after this explosion. There we go, there's another explosion. Yep, that's falling down and then we will target the one at the back. However, we have no more ammo. So, you know what? It might be a case of, well, normal fire. Pick the middle ground. You know, we're not as accurate as we... Well, in rapid fire, yes, we do get the shots out and it is very effective, but as you can see, we have used all of our ammo. So maybe maybe normal fire is the way to go. Perhaps, perhaps. But we, well, we'll never know because we're not going to try this fight again. But to do size amount of damage, plus this here. I mean, if one of these shots hits in the right place, then brilliant. But that's the right place. That's the right place. And did you see that? I'm sure that got taken out. Yeah, look, they are getting taken out. Now getting taken out. I think the rifles are shooting. Are the rifles shooting at them? Looks like the rifles are shooting at them. Okay. And oh, hang on. Hang on. Hang on. Let me pause a second. That thing's just collapsed. What have we got left? Don't say. I bet it's the one with one rocket on it. <laughs> We've got this at the back and these two. 
Oh no, we got these three. Because that's still got one left. Once we've actually still got a decent amount of weapons. Aim fire. We might be able to win this. It's unlikely, but we might be able to win it. They have two rifles back there that are taking out these things because we haven't got the uh, massive bit of fire. We're going to target that. That's luckily defeated. So we want to target this. Oh, it's that of all things. Oh, but it's taking the weapons out there. Excellent. So actually, this is the only thing that we need to defeat. Target that again. There's no shots coming out. Oh, there we go. To be fair, we put it on aim fire, so it should. Oh, there's another explosion. We've lost something. Perfect. Good hits, good hits. Just that little bit there. That's in the secondary. That should be it. That should be it. That's got that's defeated. We should have won. Have we won? Victory. <sighs> Plumber's estimate, teeth dryer. Oh, I don't know. Right, so. Not too bad. We've lost one. Completely blew up. As you can see. Three of the bit there destroyed. Three there destroyed. Three there destroyed. Kept in the fight. They didn't target the, the rest of this. They kept... As soon as this one had the majority of weapons taken out, target the next one, target the next one, target that one, and then, yeah, but we still uh, fired. Excellent. Didn't expect that. Didn't expect that at all. Right, one more fight, combat. Uh, we'll have a nice dusky combat here. We're going to go over to the building, and we're going to get the Dark Cube version... Version 2, I find, is probably the best one. And we're going to place it there and there, and we'll place it in there. So that's three of them in total. Uh, 1,900. Actually, no, that's probably a bit too much. Let's place that. And then landship. The... Hang on. Uh, oh, hang on. Filter. Uh, leads. We'll place the leads in here. And hmm, we're overpointed. Building. We'll put a version three in. It's a little bit cheaper, like that. So, one thousand eight hundred eighty-five against our one thousand four hundred sixty-nine. Start the fight, and we will go for an aimed fire on this. Now we'll keep it for normal fire, and then we'll target the central one. Mainly because if there's a deviation from that, hopefully it'll then hit that one or that one. So you can see that because of our height, the top guns on here, the top turrets, are not able to get the gun depression to shoot us, which is good. We are getting shot off rifles, we're getting shot off some cannons, and it's also rocking back and forwards. <laughs> or rocking rock, up and down. It's having a little dance for some reason. So we can see the shots are coming in there. Um, what's this one? Distracting light from the west means the shots from right to left are less accurate. Ah, so we have the advantage here, which is good. It looks like we have hit the critical point down here, which has taken that out and now some fire. Looks like that was the ammo store that's gone, so that's fine. And this one has also taken some damage. Once again, it's on the back side, which we don't really care about. Hopefully this one hits... Why did it hit me in between? Um, I'm going to get let it have a couple more shots, and then I will probably go ahead and go for an aim fire. And that is burning quite well. I'm going to assume that is pretty much dead because of the fire. So... We'll put target the front one here, get that one taken out because that technically has the most guns and oh yeah, they're definitely targeting that one. And that has just <laughs> had a catastrophic internal explosion there. We're going to go on to aim fire. We are just under half ammo, but we should still have some shots um, coming out. We've still got a total of six cannons and three rifles pointing at us, which is bad. I ah, okay, revise that. Um, we've now got uh, two less cannons and one less rifle to be worried about. I'm just hoping that it hits any of the rifles and takes those out, and it looks like we are causing some damage to this. I'm still targeting the front one. I want to get a fire on that and let it see, well, get it to burn, basically, but we are not hitting in the right place, and that's the right place. Perfect. That now has... Technically, it had some weapons on the back, but now it no longer is a threat. Unless we are looking for essentially a roadblock. And now we've got these cannons coming towards us. and uh, Sorry, we've got these cannons pointing towards us. And we are now targeting the back one. So we've managed to take out the first two. And we're just going to have a quick look at our damage. We can see that we are damaged quite substantially, actually. Uh, you can see that we've got a lot of damage in and around here. And you can see just how many crew we have as well, considering the size of this thing. We could probably get rid of some of the crew and cheapen out just a little bit. But I'd rather have extra crew because obviously they might die as a result of the uh, combat actions and we don't have a med bay and we don't have anywhere to repair it so it's probably best that we overcrew or at least get close towards the recommended 
crew, which I believe was 19, and we've got 18, so it's fine. Lovely hit there, the first hit that's taken, and it has pretty much... <laughs> pretty much disarmed it. It has removed all of the front armament. They still have the turret on the top, which is useless. A further hit on the back is going to make sure that that fire keeps going, which means that that cannon on the back is going to be destroyed, and that should be pretty much it. Let me just have a quick look, and yeah, it's a victory, and that's, um, yeah, we survived. They technically survived, but they've given up, uh, destroyed, and then disarmed. So, there you go. That is the leads. It is is pretty good. It's pretty good. It's not terribly expensive, about 1,500. It is fairly well armoured. It's got uh, the steel armour. It is decently armed, but only for ground structures are very low flying airships. I guess you, it's pretty much useless against airships because it's got Obviously, it's a ground vessel, and it's um, got a very limited arc of fire, and the travel time, the shell, well, the, I guess the, the armament velocity is really low, so it takes time for the we weapons to go from where you're firing into the end point. And um, I guess you could, t you could take it against all the ground vessels, but it's not really built for that. It would work at a pinch, but if they move too fast, then you're going to miss as well. But the original temp uh, intention was to make something that was a sieging vessel. We have used suspendium cannons in the past. We've used a lot of... Um, a lot of the torpedo launchers before, this time we only used them sparingly, we had four of them and it was a fairly sort of mini sieging turn I guess if you want to call it that and it worked out quite well. We won almost all the fights that we had against a uh, varying amount of enemies and uh, loadouts. So yeah, overall quite effective and happy with that. If you have any suggestions for changes and builds on biomeans let me know. Hope you have enjoyed the video, thanks very much for watching, take care and generic partings.